This year has been interesting because I feel like, I guess more so these last couple of years, we've been getting, like, art house movies that have been, that would typically be, like, more so indie movies that are, like, trying to get more mainstream appeal. And I feel like they slightly suffer quality-wise for it, but not enough to complain or make note of it. But since this is, like... Since there's been so many of them in a row, I feel like at this point I should mention it, even though it's not been enough of a problem in any single film of these for me to note it as a detractor in any of them. But the fact that it has been a problem through all these movies, I feel like I should mention it in one of the reviews, even though I don't think it's a fault of any one of the films. So while I don't think it's a fault of the Northman... I feel like trying to market itself as this action film, which it is not, while it is a revenge film, it's it more has like this sort of weird Lord of the Rings adventure type feel that I feel like the Green Knight also marketed itself as. Uh, the movies that I was thinking of were like Dune and things like that, where it's this weird sort of mainstream art house, where it's like it's still very, 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 very good, but it feels like... There's something that doesn't quite connect with me as deeply because it's trying to go for such a deep grab of the entire audience instead of taking deeper risks, if that makes sense. This is an extremely good movie. Uh, it's my least favorite out of the director's movies. I love The Witch and I love The Lighthouse. And I'm not quite sure if I quite loved this one, but... I thought it was quite simply great. Uh, I thought it was uh, impeccably well made. Like, it's visuals, that what little action was there, uh, the performances, uh, just everything across the board was well made. Uh, the pacing dragged in the third out of fifth section. I felt like they could have shaved off a couple of minutes there. Like, it felt like the momentum just stopped all of a sudden. The characters knew what they were trying to do, but they couldn't do it. And so they are constantly telling each other what they were trying to do. But it's like, you already know what you're trying to do. Just do it. And they don't even do it for, like, a couple more sections. So it's kind of like this frustrating hour where you're just, like, waiting for them to do what they're saying they're going to do. But since they're trying not to draw any attention to themselves, they don't do it. They just do, like, these, like, weird little side quests, if that makes sense. Like, if it was a video game. Uh, and that's totally fine, but I feel like all the other sections of the movie, like when they split out into five segments, worked better. Uh, and I still love that section of the movie because it lets you explore all the things that needed to be explored that the progression plot-wise of the movie wouldn't let you explore in the other four sections. But I just felt like if you could have shaved out a little bit more, that I would have totally loved this movie, and it would have helped pacing so much better if it didn't feel like it was stopping dead in its tracks. I, f I wish that it felt like it was going somewhere instead of having that middle of the movie lull so many longer movies have. And, like, I know that it can't really be helped, and it does help uh, the whole, like epic feel thing where you're getting this longer runtime and that sort of thing. It's kind of a thing that my brother complained about with the Green Knight. I feel like I'm experiencing here, uh, where like it's lovely to look at, but like, it's just, there's a bit of slowness that kind of takes away the appeal and it could have been a little shorter, but like, I definitely admire what was here, even though I absolutely loved The Green Knight and thought that movie was, like, perfect. And my brother had, like, the opposite reaction with this one. He absolutely loved this one and thought that it was much faster paced and more violent. But the violence, like I was warned, uh, it it isn't very focused on the violence. It's mostly off-screen. It's more focused on the brutality and horror of it than the... Well, it is semi-focused on the celebration of it. Every single time Alexander Skarsgård murders someone, everyone but him parties, like, an orgy or something, and he just kind of mopes about, 
like, angstily about how he just killed someone. And that ha there's a lot of that sort of repetition in the movie. And I'm not sure if the movie required repetition, like, if it needed to have this much repetition. Like, I don't know what the movie's trying to say by having these scenes happen over and over and over again. And if that's an editing problem, or if it has something it's trying to say by having you go through this again and again and again. If it's the cycle of violence, or what kind of commentary it's trying to make. I don't know, maybe I just didn't put together. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was really hungry while watching this movie, so watching a really long movie when you're already really hungry isn't the best idea because it will make any movie drag. So maybe on a repeat viewing, I will give this one a higher rating out of 10. That's totally possible. Uh, basically, all I could think of while I was watching the film were comparing it to other films, other TV shows. I was like, haha, it's funny because Alexander Skarsgård and Nicole Kidman also had, like, a weird relationship, I'll leave it at that, in uh, Big Little Lies, uh, where they're both uh, <coughs> a certain way, and I will leave that up to you by what I mean by that, uh, if you hadn't seen either of them. It's probably not what you're thinking, uh, <laughs> if you've seen one and not the other, uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of feels like a flip side of Big Little Lies, which I think is kind of fun, uh, and I was a little distracted by that. It also kind of feels like this has a little bit of a Shakespearean vibe. It feels a lot like Macbeth and, uh, Hamlet kind of just combined that sort of storyline basis. Uh, like, it, I, I, at first I was thinking, this, this is the Lion King, <laughs> like, story-wise, this is very R-rated Lion King, uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's really good, it's definitely worth watching, uh, I mean, I would still suggest watching everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once first, that's another one that I kind of feel like has that mainstream art house thing, but I don't, but, like I said back then, when I made the review, the problems that I had with that movie are so nitpicky that you don't feel like complaining about it after seeing the movie because you're just so impressed with the movie. All it ac accomplishes is just such a great, amazing movie. But that one does fall into that category. But I would recommend that one or this one, but this one I do definitely recommend seeing. I definitely recommend it over uh, the movies I hadn't seen that seem to be topping the box office, which are super mainstream, like Sonic 2 and Fantastic Beasts 3. I mean, who knows? Maybe they could be better than this one. I mean, I hadn't seen them, so I can't say. But I have seen the previous Fantastic Beasts movies, and I have seen the previous Sonic movie. So from what I can say of that, I don't know if those particularly deserve the as much money as they make. But that's kind of the deal. Uh, the great indie movies tend to make no money, while the terrible box office drawers tend to make all of the money, because the people want what the people want, I guess. Um, I, I just have a lot to say with this one. Uh, there were a lot of things from Robert Eggers' previous movies that I felt like were repeated in this one, so that's part of why it didn't feel as unique. Like, the whole revenge movie thing, that was the unique part of this movie, but did a lot of things that were familiar from The Witch especially. Uh, the whole psychedelic, like, the ending of The Witch especially, I felt repeated a lot in here. Like, that sort of vibe. I mean, Anya Taylor-Joy's in it. Willem Dafoe is even in this, which he was in The Lighthouse, and they even have fart jokes, which, you know... Willem Dafoe in the lighthouse, he he did the farts, and he was even involved in the scene with the farts in this one. Uh, and you get burps too, so that's already like 10 out of 10 right there. Uh, yeah, everyone in this movie is really good, acting-wise. Though, because Bjork was so good in Dancer in the Dark, I was kind of left wanting more from her. Also, be warned, I won't say who, just in case if you're going in blind, but... Uh, Certain actors, I wish that they were in the movie more, and uh, because they had so little screen time, I felt like I wasn't able to appreciate them as well, especially since 
uh, a lot of actors are just kind of in the beginning of the movie, and then you don't really see them again much. Even Nicole Kidman, which I'm okay with saying her name because she's in the whole movie. I mean, she's at the top of the cast list. She feels like she's barely utilized, even though she's very interesting in the movie. I won't say why, but she is. Uh, it feels like she's super underutilized. Like, she's only in a couple of scenes, and the scenes she's in don't last very long. And that's kind of disappointing. It feels like you're basically spending the whole movie with Alexander Skarsgård. Uh, the uncle, and Anya Taylor-Joy, and that's basically it. Everyone else is just, like, a supporting character that is only in, like, a scene or two. Uh, yeah. But everyone is good in it. Uh, it's definitely very recommendable. Uh, I'll, I, if I had to rank the director's movies, I'd go Lighthouse, The Witch, and then The Northman. Uh, this one isn't far behind The Witch. Uh, it's just that The Witch, I think, is, like, almost as good as The Lighthouse. Both of those are, like, I have no problems with either of those, really. Uh, and this one, the fact that I do have problems with it automatically makes it the worst one. But still a very, very good watch. It's a very good movie. One that I will probably own. Uh, actually, scratch that. I think I will own it. Uh, because... It's very good. <laughs> uh, I do want to stress that. And I do think that I mean, Hang Not Ian made me like impatient with the movie. Because uh, it's it's a long movie. It's like two and a half hours. So then when you're like in the middle of the movie. And you're like, okay, I'm waiting for people to do things. Let's go. <laughs> uh, that was why it was starting to get a little problematic for me. I probably would have absolutely loved the movie. Uh, if I wasn't so hungry, and if I had anticipated a lull in the middle act of the movie, but whatever. Uh, I can't wait to rewatch it, even if it has that lull. Uh, I'm sure that it being broken up into five pieces will help me rewatch it, because I can just watch it in pieces, and that will literally fix that problem. So it was very smart in an editing standpoint, that if you think it's slow that you can break it up into those five pieces, because I feel like they did that perfectly with pacing-wise. Since the, they split into, like, half-hour chapters, that felt, like, very well done with, like, flow. Like, I felt like whenever I'm like, this is starting to go on for a bit, then it would end the chapter, I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Very good. Very good stuff. Uh, I think next I'll be saying The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which is the movie where Nicolas Cage plays Nicolas Cage tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, I'm hoping to see The Bad Guys eventually. Uh, I don't know if I'll get the chance to see that one in theaters, though. Uh, Memory will be coming to theaters next weekend. I doubt that I'll be able to see that one in theaters. I'll probably see that one on DVD. Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just see how it, how it goes. I'm also ho hoping to see Duel, but that one hasn't been playing anywhere around me. I love the art of self-defense, so, you know. And I really like, uh, oh gosh, what's the first one called by that director? Faults. I, I really like Faults, too, so, you know. I've heard somewhat mixed things about Duel, though. Alright, I'll just end this review because I am rambling. Uh, yeah...